Welcome to build 53. Finally, another case labs build. It's been a long time since we've done one on the channel. I think the last S8 build we did was build 43 with the dual Xeons and 7108 Ti's. Everyone always loves a case labs build and me too. It brings me back to those days of building those mega builds, you know, the TH10 builds with quad SLI and four 480 millimeter radiators and push pull fans just completely over the top builds that I did so many of back in the day. I think unfortunately those days are behind us. Things are definitely changing, but it is certainly back, great to be back building Case Labs builds. So the first thing that I'm doing here is figuring out the layout of the radiators. This build is going to have dual loops and we have three black ice radiators, two GTX and a GTR. So we're going to give one of the GTXs, the thicker radiators, to the CPU loop, and then the other two radiators are going to be for the GPU loop. So the GPU loop is going to have the side-mounted 360 and a top-mounted thin 360 because it's only just going to fit above the GPU, and the CPU loop is going to have a GTX. So it brings me back to some of the challenges of building into Case Labs cases because it has been quite a while, and particularly the case labs cases with horizontal motherboard trays have some challenges with cable management and also the loops like there's some sections of the loop that can't really be done properly without case mods and this case already has a couple of holes drilled into it for the loop but we'll get to that later we have a 3090 kingpin here which is quite a rare gpu only a handful of people managed to get their hands on these things and what an incredible gpu like pulling this thing apart and looking at the design of the PCB, even the cooler was really nice, but putting on this hydro copper water block is definitely going to be a massive improvement over the AIO. I'm not even sure why they launched these things with AIOs, but anyway, it certainly looks a lot cooler with the water block and is going to perform the hell of a lot better. But just installing this for the first time, I was a little bit nervous that it wouldn't fit. And sure enough, it didn't fit with the radiators and it required a couple of mods. So I had to space up the top dual 360 millimeter radiator mounting panel by 10 millimeters. This is a mod that I've done previously in the S8 to fit wide GPUs. It's a simple mod. You just need six spaces of you know any width. This time we use 10 millimeters but it still didn't quite fit. It was actually hitting the radiator, but it was hitting the, the casing, like the mount on the radiator. So I was able to just to cut off a small section of the radiator and then it just fit perfectly. Like it had about a three millimeter gap between the top of the graphics card and the radiator. So you can see the splitters that we're using now are Singularity computers, and these are custom designed by us and the reason we made our own hubs is because all of the hubs that we were using, we were having some failures. So we had build customers contacting us like even a year down the track sometimes saying all of my fans are not working. And this is a huge problem, obviously. So, you know, sometimes like two, three years down the track it was happening, we'd send them a new hub. But we decided we just wanted to just eliminate the risk of that happening altogether. And so we designed our own hubs and now we have a range of them and it was good to do because we could also design layouts that are a bit more suitable than the ones that are available you know nice long skinny ones so that you can hide them somewhere and also do something really high quality so this is when I actually discovered the problem with the graphics card still not quite fitting and I did the little mod to the radiator now you can see how we lay out our fan cables I've been over this like a thousand times but generally what we do is we like get the the layouts of the radiators the way that they're going to be oriented you know where the ports are going to be facing which side the fans are going to be on which way we're going to run the cables to attach to the hubs and then we cut all of the fan cables to length or we make custom fan cables which is sometimes necessary to get them all to the exact length to run to the hubs, sleeve them so that everything is nice and clean and assemble all of that outside of the build so that it can just be put all, you know, into the build in one clean unit all already connected. But sometimes you have to dismantle it again if there's mounting panels in between. Like in this case, we probably just shouldn't have put those fans on to begin with, but we did that to get all of those lengths correct. 
So this is some of the challenges that I'm talking about with case labs cases. This is similar to the upper and lower compartment in the STH-10, the lower compartment in the SMA-8. There's a lot of the loop that is very difficult to get to. And the side mounted 360 is one of the most difficult to connect up to because you just can't get your hands in there to make the connections to the fittings. And I didn't actually film me doing this because you just literally couldn't see anything. You could just see my, you know, my hands in, in a couple of holes and that's about it. But it was actually easier than I thought, but probably just because I've done it a thousand times. But yeah, it can be very difficult making those connections to that side mounted 360. And you can see that this was a, a second hand case. Obviously, somebody had already modified it and added those two portholes. I only ended up using one of those portholes, but yeah, there's definitely some mods that need to be done and, and similar with other case labs cases like I used to always modify the reservoir mounting areas on the SMA8, the TH10 and also modify the the dividing panels on the SMA8 and the STH10 like to get the loop up and down into the, the upper and lower compartments. Quite a lot of mods there are required if you actually want to do a clean loop. And I mean cutting and drilling the cases. I know a lot of people are trying to avoid cutting and drilling these cases because they're really highly sought after collector's items now. But if you want to avoid that, you're going to be doing some extremely long runs with the loops. And yeah, it's going to be uh, a messy build. So most of the time these days, I plan out the entire loop before I start bending any tube. So what I mean is like, I don't just plan out one loop or half of a loop and then start tube bending and installing tube. Like I want to know how every single tube is going to be routed. You know, I'm not just talking about component order, but I'm also talking about exactly like how the bends are going to go and everything. So I actually install all of my fittings first. And you know, when I'm installing the fittings, I kind of plan out how the tubes are going to go, how they're going to be bent. And really what you want to be doing when you're planning out the loop and installing the fittings is minimizing the amount of bends. I know that you can build loops with less fittings, but you know, a lot of these customers want me to use more fittings because they like the look of it. It's cleaner. You know, if you get these tubes with a lot of complex bends and offsets, it really starts to look a little bit like, you know, more messy. And you can see that I tried to do a couple of sections here to minimize fittings and I ended up scrapping them because they weren't really what the customer was after. So I'm just doing a section here. I think this one was for going up to the, the, the CPU water block. And yeah, I just didn't end up liking the look of it. Even though it was bent well, you know, there was nothing wrong with the bends. I ended up opting for fittings just to get really clean runs on the bends. So just kind of getting it all just to 90 degree bends for this build, like one 90 degree bend per tube instead of yeah offsets or, or multiple bends. Now, if you're going to do multiple bends, it is definitely more challenging, but tube is cheap. You can just have multiple attempts, but seriously, the amount of time that you put into getting it right sometimes is, is quite a lot. Now, something that I, I keep coming back to is tube alignment. Like you see so many people doing builds where the tube is slightly misaligned. And for me, it's, it's very off-putting. I know it's incredibly difficult to, to get it aligned, but it, it comes down to the fittings. And a lot of people ask why I am still using these bits power fittings. And it's really just because the, the range of fittings there and also the you know the extensions the increments of the extensions I find that I can do everything that I need to do with these fittings to get my loop exactly how I want it so you'll often end up in a situation where you know you're like three millimeters out of alignment and there's no fitting that can give you three millimeters but if you know what you're doing with these particular fittings you can get 2.5 millimeter increments on the extensions and there are telescopic fittings and there are so many other little shortcuts and cheats that you can use with these fittings. So it's really good for, you know, these sorts of builds where you have some like really difficult tube runs. You know, there's no doubt that you end up with some very difficult tube runs in these builds. And actually the most difficult tube runs 
surprisingly are the short ones. So if you see that connection back from the top 360 millimeter radiator there for the CPU loop, connecting back to the top of the res, that is kind of one of the most difficult ones to get. Because if you've got a long distance between two ports, you can do anything with the tube, with the fittings. But yeah, short distances are extremely limited and there were quite a few in this build. And they're the ones that you, at least I, really want to use the most because what you're trying to do is build the shortest loop that you can. Picking the component order that gives you the shortest overall tube length. So going the shortest distance. So, you know, you start at one port, what's the nearest thing that you can connect to? And so you do end up with some of those really short lengths with like offsets or something where it's hard to find the fittings that you need to make the connections. But that's where you need some a good range of fittings, extensions, rotaries, you know, all the rest of it, D-plugs. So these loops filled really easily. I think I got them both just on the first fill and that's because of the horizontal layout of this build. So, you know, the loop volume is kind of spread out a lot horizontally. I'm using dual protium 2 combos here, which worked out really nicely because of the positions of the ports and there are so many ports on the pump tops, both inlets and outlets on the pump tops, multiple outlets and inlets on protium 2, unlike protium 1, which only had a single outlet. So that really helped with those extremely difficult connections across to that side mounted 360 millimeter radiator. This is a part that I don't show like I show seconds of it, but this build took more than eight hours to do the cable management. I know that's going to sound surprising and that's not including doing the sleeving on the core component cables. So I actually had Pexon do these cables for me because we've become so busy with product development and other things that we've like started to outsource our, our cables recently. But just to, to make all of the extra cables, like you know, the, the fan extensions that go from the motherboard to the hubs, planning out all of that, making all of those custom cables, managing them, and the RGB must have taken at least half of the time. There is actually a lot of RGB here. You're not really going to notice because it's all well hidden, but managing RGB cables is like one of the most difficult things. But, you know, that's why we do this. We don't do it because it's easy. We do it because it is difficult. And Something I'd like to start showing a little bit more is like the the challenges, the pain involved in doing it. Because a lot of people contact me and, and they're like, you know, like what what the hell am I going to do with my RGB cables? Like this is just impossible. There's no way to manage them. And it's like, yeah, that's that's right. It you know it is one of the challenges. It's something that you have to do something, f find a way. And there are yeah, there's a lot of challenges like that with with building these systems and. That's why we do it. If it was easy, I wouldn't do it. I do it because it is a challenge and it's, that's why it's fun.